Hello and welcome to my video on phase diagrams. Um, this video will basically explain what a phase diagram is, um, what it shows you in relation to uh, the phases of a substance. Um, it's pretty straightforward, pretty basic, so let's just jump right in. Um, so what the first question we should ask is, what is a phase? A phase is just a state of matter. Um, for instance, water takes three different phases normally. Uh, a solid phase, which we refer to as ice. It takes a liquid phase, which we usually call just water. And it takes a gas phase, which we call steam or water vapor. So this is a phase diagram for water, or H2O. And so what is this diagram showing us? Um, so we have two axes. The y axis, we have pressure. On the x, we have temperature. So this diagram is showing us the phase water will take depending on the pressure and temperature conditions of that water. So for instance, if we have temperature at this point, let's just call that 50 degrees Celsius, and we have water at a pressure of right here, which we'll call one atmosphere, where are we going to be? We're going to be in the water, liquid water phase, right? Okay, so that's the way the diagram works. Let's do an example. Um, let's say we have a pot of ice and we are at an atmospheric pressure of one atmosphere. Okay. And uh, let's say we take this ice and we put it in a pot and we put it on the stove. And this ice is originally at, let's say, negative 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. So our atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. This is not going to change, right? This is going to be constant because we're at one location. We're not going to change elevation and change our pressure or do anything else weird that's going to change our atmospheric pressure. So this will stay constant, but our temperature will change, okay? So we start out 30 degrees Celsius, negative 30 degrees Celsius, one atmospheric pressure. So we're right here, right in the ice phase, right? Okay, so we got our ice on the pot, in the pot, on the stove, and we start heating it. And we start adding heat and raising the temperature. And we keep doing it until we reach this point right here. We reach this line. And what happens here? Well, I'm sure you can guess that we're going to melt this ice, right? We're going to go through a phase transition. And that's what this line represents. It represents the phase transition from solid to liquid. OK, so when we hit this line, we're going to make a phase change from the solid to the liquid. But what happens when we make that phase change? Do we just automatically go from a solid chunk of ice to you know, a pot full of water? No, we melt it, right? We melt the ice and we have water and ice existing together, right? So that's what this line also represents. Anything on this line represents water and ice together, okay? So if whatever temperature and pressure you get at, if you fall on this line, you're gonna be having water and ice together, all right? So that's what all these lines represent. So kind of recap it here, we have fields, we have these two-dimensional fields, which represent one phase, and then we have this one-dimensional line, which represents two phases, okay? So right here we have water and ice together. Over here we have water and gas together, okay? And down here we have ice and gas together. So back to our example, we've heated our ice, we've hit this line, we're going to stay at this line. We're melting our ice into water. Once we get no more ice, we've heated it up to where we've melted it completely into water, we're going to start moving into this field. We're in the liquid liquid phase now. We've heated all our ice up. We have no more ice. We're only liquid now, okay? So we keep adding heat, keep adding heat, keep raising the temperature until we get to the next phase boundary. And where does that take us? That takes us into the gas phase. And again, just like we had water and ice here, here we're going to have water and steam, or water and water vapor. And that's what happens when you boil water, right? You have water that is boiling and releasing steam. You don't have all steam, you don't have all water, you have a mixture of both, okay? 
So we're at this line and we're boiling our water, all right? So if we keep boiling, if we keep adding heat to our pot, eventually we'll boil off all the liquid water and it'll just be steam. We'll have boiled it all into vapor, right? And that'll put us square within the vapor field or the gas field. Okay, so pretty basic. The important things to remember are that these lines represent not only a phase change, but also uh, points on this graph where two substances can go coexist, all right? You'll also notice that there's two points. These are zero dimensional uh, fields. So just a single point there and a single point up here. And down here we have the, what's called the triple point. The triple point, as you can probably surmise, is the, the pressure and the temperature at which ice, liquid water, and water vapor can coexist. And there's only one temperature and one pressure that this can happen at. Okay? Up here, we have the critical point. And again, there's only one temperature and one pressure that this can occur at. The critical point is where where water transforms into a new phase called a supercritical fluid. And the supercritical fluid behaves in its own sort of fashion. It doesn't behave like a liquid, it doesn't behave like a gas. We'll just leave it alone for right now because I don't want to get too complicated and we'll leave that for another video, okay? Okay, so that's kind of the basics of a, of a constant single pressure phase transformation or an isobaric phase transformation, okay? Isobaric means constant pressure or one continuous constant pressure, all right? Let's look at what happens when we have um, different pressures, okay? So let's look at an example where um, we have the same example at a high pressure and a low pressure, okay? And let's look at it like, um, let's look at it like you're gonna melt ice, you're gonna do the same thing with ice um, in Seattle, okay? You're in Seattle, and I am in Denver down here, okay? And my the atmospheric pressure in Denver, let's say, is 0 0.5 atmospheres. And the atmosphere in atmospheric pressure in Seattle is 1.5 atmospheres. Now, these aren't correct numbers. I'm just making this up to illustrate my point. So we do the same experiment, okay? So you melt your ice on the stove at 1.5 atmospheres and I'll do it at 0 0.5 atmospheres, okay? Now, let's say we heat both of our ice cubes up to a temperature of T1. All right, let me draw this up to help illustrate my point. All right, it's the same temperature, okay? Now, what happens when you heat your ice, you, up, you down there in Seattle at 1.5 atmospheres, you heat it up to T1 you reach the phase transformation, right? You've reached the boundary. You're going to start melting your ice. You're going to have a mixture of ice and water. What happens when I hit T1? Nothing. I've heated my ice up a little bit, but I'm not changing its phase. I'm still within the ice phase. So what's going on there? Why is it that you require less heat at a higher pressure than I do at a lower pressure to melt ice? Well, to not get too bogged down in details here, we need to look at the fact that when ice transforms into water, it shrinks. Likewise, when water transforms into ice, it expands, right? Ice expands. Uh, ice will contract when it melts into water, right? So when ice is under pressure, it has a lot of atmospheric pressure coming down on it, it wants to accommodate this pressure. You know, it wants to react to this pressure and stay in equilibrium. So how does it do this? It does this by shrinking, by contracting. How does it contract? It melts into water, right? That's how ice contracts. It melts. That's how it accommodates this pressure, is that it melts into water, okay? So that's why at higher pressures, you need less heat to make that phase transformation, right? And I don't want to go too far in the weeds on that, so let's leave it for another video. All right, so let's continue our example. And let's heat these mixtures, these ice water mixtures, up to temperature of T2. All right? T2. 
Now, what happens when I reach T2? Alright, so eventually I'll get into the liquid phase. I'll go through the liquid phase. I'll hit T2. And then what do I get? I'm right on the border between a gas and a, and a liquid, right? So what does that mean? I'm boiling water. Here at T2, I'm going to boil water. What happens when you get to T2? You're not doing anything. You're still in the liquid phase. You may have heated your water up a little bit, but you are not boiling water, whereas I am, okay? So what is, let's think about that conceptually. This is a little easier to, to conceptualize, but if we have... We have a body of water, and again, we're in our, let's make this correct here, we're in our pot, you know, we're on the stove, we're heating the water. Okay, so you, let's see, this is the one in Denver, this is the one in, um, or is it Seattle, right? So high pressure here, lots of pressure weighing down on this, this ice, or excuse me, this water. Low pressure here, okay? If we have a lot of pressure acting on this body of water, this pressure wants to keep this water in a liquid form. It doesn't want to let it uh, go into vapor, right? The pressure is acting on the water to keep it in a liquid form, okay? If we have less pressure, this water is more available to go into a vapor, okay? Because there's less force acting on it to hold it in a liquid form. Therefore, we need less heat to put it into a vapor. Okay, makes sense? Less pressure, less heat. More pressure, we need more heat. There's more pressure acting in the water. It wants to keep it in a water form, in the liquid form. Therefore, we need to heat it more to get it to that phase transformation. All right? Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, like the video, subscribe. And we'll be seeing you soon with a new video. All right.